Here we are at example four from our 2.2, 2.37 notes. We're asked to sketch the graph uh, of this function and this other function by identifying the x and y intercepts. So right now we see that we have the x's and y's on one side and is equal to some number on the other, likewise with this function as well. And as a result, this is actually in what we call standard form. And when we have that standard form like that, we can actually go ahead and create a box. And inside that box, we're gonna go ahead and create just a little uh, cross. Now above this box, we have an X and a Y. And every single time when we're graphing this in standard form, we're always gonna go ahead and throw in zero, zero on this diagonal. Now the idea with how this works with standard form is we're taking this value zero, throwing it into x for this function. Well, three times zero as a result of that just comes out to be zero, and pretty much this entire first piece would be just gone, really. So the only thing that we have to really solve for then is uh, y in this case. So we end up with four y is equal to 12, and you can actually write it out if you'd like. You don't have to if, you're, uh, if you obviously know what the answer is. So then three would have to be, oops, three would have to be that answer as a result when you divide both sides by four. Um, but again, if you can do that in your head, you can definitely go ahead and do that. Now from that, that actually creates the point zero comma three. In other words, when you graph that, here is zero comma three. We can see that it is in fact crossing that y axis. In other words, this is that y intercept, zero comma three. Alternatively, we're trying to now find the x intercept. Well. If it's in fact crossing this x-axis, our y value is going to be zero because again, we're not moving up or down any for x. And that's why we can go ahead and throw in zero for y specifically. When we throw in zero for y, we end up with four times zero. Well, essentially this piece would be gone again, just like we did with x's a moment ago. So then we're just left with three x is equal to 12. Well, three times what would give you 12? Four would accomplish that. And as a result, just like we did with the other problem or the other point really, uh, what we've done is we've created a point, four, zero. So one, two, three, four, put a dot there. And now we just have two points. As we can see, we found the y-intercept, we've also found the x-intercept, where it's crossing that x-axis. And now, when you're graphing in standard form, all you really have to do is connect the two dots together. So you would see a graph looking something like this. Going ahead now and moving on to this 2x minus 3y is equal to 9. Let's go ahead and do our little, since it is in standard form, let's go ahead and create our little uh, box. Here's the cross. Zeros on the main diagonal. Here's our x and y. Same exact idea. When we go ahead and throw in 0 for x, this guy is pretty much gone. So negative 3 times what gives you 9? Well, negative three would accomplish that. Alternatively, now we're gonna go ahead and throw in zero for y and see what that comes out to be. Well, when we throw in zero for this y value, three times zero is zero, which pretty much just makes this guy go away. And then we're just left with two x is equal to nine. So in other words, two times what gives us nine? Well, 4.5 would do that. Or if you wanted to say four and a half, it's the same thing. And again, what we've done here is we've actually created two different points. And we can just go ahead and graph these. So we have zero, negative three. There he is, 4.5. There is that point. And all we have to do is connect the two dots. So again, this was actually our x-intercept. This one would have been our y intercept. So, again, that is example four from our 2.2, 2.3 set of notes.